um, newly joined us. Now we are pleased to welcome Regina Supos, who will be talking to us about uh, not reinventing the wheel constantly within the community space. So, Regina, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, for being here. A disclaimer, I'm not a community manager whatsoever, so um, I hope it's still going to be going to be fine. Um, this is the slide that you do not have to read. Um, what I wanted to start with is um, the Social Digital Innovation um, Initiative um, that I'm going to be referring to tonight, um, a German non-for-profit company. Um, and we are basically a traveling circus, which is important for you to know because it's going to be very important for um, our community. Traveling circus means uh, we piloted in Berlin last year, then we were invited to Hung Oh, then, yes, like this. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> the traveling circus. Uh, we piloted in Berlin last year, um, and then we were invited to Hungary um, to run our program, which you're going to be knowing, learning a bit more about in a second. Um, and this year, we're actually planning uh, on running programs uh, in the Adriatic region and in Brazil. Uh, what we do, these programs, uh, are open collaborative processes, um, and the idea is to help um, cross uh, pollinate um, basically tech um, and social initiatives. Um, what we try to do is uh, not to replicate um, existing infrastructures um, such as uh, networks and groups of local people um, or co working spaces, um, things that would normally be relevant um, to our program, uh, but we think that we can also source these from, um, from other people. The idea is that we do not want to duplicate um, existing things. Um, what we do do is uh, we build uh, bridges for collaboration uh, between open source um, technology, uh, be that software or hardware, um, and social innovators. Uh, and we help them develop um, sustainable and impactful projects together. Um, we teach them social business skills. Um, but before I go ahead with that, uh, there is one thing that I want to clarify. Uh, when I say social entrepreneur or social innovator, um, the person that I mean is not the one um, in this hat um, and with the cigar. Um, it's a person like Kate um, who works in uh, Kenya um, to help um, local craftswomen um, basically get online uh, and sell their, uh, sell their um, jewelry um, to people around the world without uh, being ripped off by a middleman. Um, she is the one who creates the e-commerce platform and she is the one who trains, um, or by now her team, um, who um, helps these local craftswomen um, take good pictures um, and then also upload them. Um, the major difference between the dude on the right and this woman on the, on the left um, is that um, Kate actually has a um, cooperative approach um, instead of a competitive one. Um, and um, this is also important for me to point out when I say social uh, entrepreneur or social innovator. I don't actually mean um, something like um, a social network. What I mean is that these people are working um, to improve the lives of their communities or humanity um, as a, an entity. Um, so we teach these people um, business skills, social business skills. Um, those look slightly different um, from actual business skills. There's a triple bottom line. Um, I could go on for hours about this, but that's not the point. Uh, one of the things that we always um, point out um, is, this, um, is this concept that Ashoka has developed, uh, a foundation working with social entrepreneurs um, called the Smart Network. And the idea of the smart network is that um, it depicts an evolution uh, of cooperation um, as we know it. Basically what happens if you move um, your ego away from the center of your activities um, and put your vision in there um, and try to develop uh, networks, cooperations, collaborations with others um, and grow your projects which are for social good through that. Um, and through the smart networks, um, we believe that people can work uh, much more efficiently because everybody's doing what they are best at. Um, 
and they leave the <coughs> tasks that they are not very good at up to others. And so this is why today I want to talk to you about um, setting up communities um, in more of a critical way. Um, because if we uh, ourselves, uh, when, we, when we are supporting social projects, um, we actually ask them and teach them that they have to cooperate, um, then maybe we should be doing that, the same thing with our community platforms too. Um, I'm sure this has already been discussed today a million times, the different types of communities. When I say community, um, I think of the communities of interest, um, people with specific knowledge um, on a certain topic. And so what worked? Um, why, when we started our program last year, uh, we were cocky enough to say, oh yeah, we can set up another community platform? Um, my colleagues and I um, have worked um, for a very long time for um, a, an agency of the United Nations. Um, it's called the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union. And so our platform uh, that we set up there had 18,000 people worldwide. Um, growing in the first couple of years. Um, I'm pretty sure that we could have, um, you know, improved, Im even improved these numbers further. Um, and they were actually coming from 180 different countries. Um, the reason why it worked, um, that platform for us, is um, because when we set up the platform, we kind of launched it with a huge global event. Um, and we built um, the beginnings um, basically on a data set um, a, a list of emails uh, of people who have already um, participated in different, um, in different competitions that we had organized before. So we knew that this platform would be relevant for them. Um, there was also this aspect of continuous engagement um, on the platform because every year we announced four to five challenges um, to which people could apply and these were broad enough or open-ended enough that, um, that they did attract a lot of people. Um, we also had quality content coming from different mentors, um, so people had a reason to check back um, often enough uh, to find something, um, a little treat um, on this platform. And um, the other thing that helped was that there was also a gamification uh, aspect built into this platform. Uh, so people who have applied um, to these challenges um, could get vote, uh, uh, points uh, when uh, their ideas were voted upon. Uh, and so there was this in incentive for them to invite people, um, their friends, uh, vote on each other, um, and basically just um, work, work together. And so the adaptation went fast, uh, really, really fast, um, probably also because it was the UN, um, and a lot of people would like to have this stamp of approval on their projects. Um, but also because um, people generally, I think, like to share um, their ideas and their views. Uh, and I think, of course, also part of it was because you could, if you won a challenge, you could actually win a free tip, trip to somewhere nice. Um, and so what did we learn um, last year when we <laughs> tried to set up a, a different platform and why it did not work? Um, when I left the ITU, um, I decided to launch this SDI project, the Social Digital Innovation Project. Um, and as I said before, the nature of our program is that we uh, don't really actually want to build anything that is already out there, um, simply because we think that it is a waste of um, everybody's time and energy. Um, we also, our city or um, at the max, country level engagement is more um, if I may say so, one-off. Um, so we go somewhere um, and we run these events, bring people together um, and incubate a bunch of them, uh, but then we're basically out of there. Um, this should change soon uh, when we are going to be developing uh, our legacy program, uh, basically inviting trainers um, to learn how the whole thing works um, and then run it after we're gone. Um, completely separate from us, um, if they don't want to don't want to be part of it anymore. Um, but we actually also, I have to say that we did not have the right capacities um, to um, to really bring uh, a good community together. Um, we're also going to have a bunch of knowledge products that we're working on. Um, 
even if um, these are already um, CC attribution share alike, um, the problem with that is that even though these are going to be collabor collaborative at some point, um, at this stage um, they are not. And so why will we, um, even if we can say that we can work without a, a, a community platform, why do we want to have one um, at, one, at some stage? Um, we would actually like to build, uh, continue building these bridges. Um, and currently there is no other platform where the two target groups that we're working with um, are truly present. The two target groups being um, the techies uh, and the social entrepreneurs or social innovators. Um, we also want to, um, of course, the most important point of this is cross-pollination. Um, so the idea that uh, both, uh, both communities can actually work from each other, um, learn from each other and work together with each other. Um, we would also like to make sure that all the knowledge um, that people are sharing, all the ideas, um, everything that the mentors bring in throughout the incubation program um, is actually collected um, and, um, and collectively also worked upon somewhere. Um, we're definitely looking at turning these into open educational resources. Um, we might as well you know, just start out with a wiki. It's perfectly fine. We also need this, um, or will be needing some sort of a platform um, in the future, um, because um, when we're talking about these local communities, um, it is very, very important for them um, to actually be able to, um, to work together um, with global communities. And these global communities also will want to have an effect on these local communities. Um, However, for people to be happy with this platform, uh, something that we will definitely want to make sure um, is that um, they feel like they belong to this community um, and that they have um, this sense of um, security um, and trust, which is, I'm sure, also is often mentioned um, when talking about online communities. And so we also are going to develop um, or have to find ways to develop incentives for people um, to check back every day or as often as possible. And so for um, coming to this platform um, to become a habit, so to say, and maybe part of their identity. So um, for us at this stage, the question would be um, either, are there any tech community platforms out there um, that would be interested um, in having more social innovation um, going on um, in their community? Um, or are there any social projects um, that would, um, or you know, places gathering um, social entrepreneurs um, who would like to see more techies um, in the discussion? Um, I have to say about this second one um, is that they are generally not um, running um, these communities um, on, well, on, well, they're running them on popular proprietary platforms, uh, which is definitely not an option for us. Um, so we would have to stay with the, stick with the first version. Um, and so for us, uh, because of the nature of our, uh, of our program, it would also, of course, be very important that um, if we find a community to cooperate with, um, these people would have to have um, a strong user base um, in countries where um, we are actually going to be active. So it really doesn't help us if you know, there's a, a, a completely active community in Japan if our program gets funding for Brazil. So tapping into existing ideas, um, especially based on what I said about, uh, about smart networks, letting other people do what they do best, um, it's, um, it should be a great idea and a really good advice to ourselves. Um, but the big question is which communities could really benefit from us, um, of having um, our program on their, uh, on their platform, right? Um, because one of the main ideas um, of the smart network theory um, is that it definitely has to create win-win situations um, for both, all three, all of the parties that are involved in this. 
So generally we are looking for platforms um, that have very active um, physical, local groups, um, but it's also very important for us that these platforms also need to be looking for um, more activities for their members to engage in. Um, and so the ones that we have looked at, um, they're already in the social tech scene. This is how we also got in touch with them. Um, mainly looking at um, the OSC, Open Source Circular Economy Days, um, and Edge Riders. Um, OSC Days uh, being a more community and activity based, um, and Edge Riders being on the more of the social side, more of a, more of a think tank. But the third thing is that I wanted to tell you about a, a little bit today. Um, is Envienta. It's a project that's based in Hungary um, and also in Spain and we um, got the chance last year to incubate them. Um, they are actually thinking or well working very hard already um, of setting up a platform um, that encompasses a bunch of different um, tools um, and um, tools that, uh, that people could use. Um, one is a community platform, a, um, an anti-Facebook kind of thing, um, where you could say so many people are working on that already. Um, the other interesting thing um, that they're working on is an open source hardware um, cryptocurrency based um, crowdfunding um, platform. Um, where the interesting point is that we could actually really contribute to it. Um, because what people are looking for um, when um, supporting um, a crowdfunding campaign um, is um, they would actually be very interested in actually getting whatever they're supporting. Um, and for that, these teams have to have some sort of an idea of how they're going to deliver. Um, and that's what we're good at. That's what, that's what we can do. Um, so I thought that I would bring this um, as an example um, of how to um, how people can work together um, and basically just help each other um, with whatever they are doing best. So to start concluding, because this day has been very long for all of us. Um, the platform, the audience, and also the value proposition to your audience um, has to be a very, very good fit um, for it to work. Uh, and with this smart network um, theory, um, I think we can say that um, the whole can actually be greater than the sum of its parts um, through collaboration and through cross-pollination and everybody doing the things they are best at and leaving up to others what they are much better at. Um, what worked for us um, in the first round was starting with a big um, engaging event, but I think um, in the long term what can also of course work um, is being patient um, and slowly building up the community. Um, and something that you definitely already know is um, finding ways to not to have hierarchies, not to have top-down uh, management, but still good community management um, in your community, and to create incentives for people um, to actually stay um, in the community and come back as often as possible. So at this stage, um, I uh, also would like to make, turn this into an open call. Um, if you have any ideas, um, where we could be useful um, for a community that you know about, um, then definitely let us, let us know. Um, for a chat, you can write me on my first email. If, you know, collaborations, um, any ideas come up, uh, then I'm available on the second one. Um, and any kind of academic ideas can go to the third. You can also find me on Twitter. Um, and one last call, uh, one last thing before, um, before I finish. Um, as I mentioned, we are actually going to be uh, starting our um, next incubation cycle very soon um, in the Adriatic Ionian region. Um, so if you know anybody who could be interested, um, then definitely send them our way. Thank you.
Um, we are, yes, um, yes, who funds the incubation program um, or where do we get funding from? Um, being a German non-profit um, company, uh, we're actually eligible for, um, for funding from, uh, from German foundations. Um, and I think that that's um, really the safest way not to, not to be involved in any kind of money that you don't want to be associated with. I do, sorry, excuse me, yes? So, so you say that everybody should do what they're good at, but isn't that discouraging people from learning their things at the same time? Or yes, of course. I'm uh, sorry, the question was, um, isn't, if everybody's doing what they're best at, isn't that discouraging people from learning um, new things at the same time? Um, yes, of course. Um, that's, um, this, was, this was cut very, very short. Um, so, um, no, I, I completely agree with you. I really think that um, what you're um, interested in is definitely something um, that, you should, uh, that you should learn to do uh, and as, be as multifaceted as possible. Um, but try to learn from the best. Um, that would definitely be something that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Excellent. If you yes. check it out, I'll make sure that we amp it. Um, Great. We Thank you. One more question only, and then we're going to welcome Mike. Uh, I'm going to say you. The, it's not my call, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you contact, or how do you get contacted by the social entrepreneurs? Um, how do we get contacted by the social entrepreneurs? Um, we actually do work together here again, Smart Networks. Um, what we do is work together with uh, local partners. In Berlin it was easy because I already lived in Berlin, so I had um, a lot of these networks. Um, what we did in Hungary is we had um, a couple of really, really good partners who already did this legwork for us. Um, so I think that, again, your best bet is going to be, instead of trying to set up um, another you know, um, chain of information, try to get to the right people, work with the ones that are kind of the usual suspects anyway, um, and then work, work, work from there. It Ask. Was, it was more of, um, if I know any social yeah. entrepreneurs oh. from my area or region, <laughs> how, how do they participate in, the, in your project? Yeah, they, um, so th through this link and our, and our website, there is an open, um, open um, basically, forum. Um, so anybody can reach out to us, and then uh, then we then we get back in touch. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.